there should be a very massive cloud of gas around it that uh, carries uh, uh, 5 billion tons. And uh, so in the coming weeks, we should be able to see that cloud of, of gas. Just days after 3i Atlas skimmed past the sun, it broke the script. It drifted miles off the gravity-only course and flashed an electric blue that standard comet physics can't comfortably explain. Numbers say it should be dumping billions of tons of debris to create that kind of non-gravitational push. Telescopes say otherwise. The sky around it is cleaner than expected. And for the first time in a long time, serious people are asking the question everyone tiptoes around. What exactly is pushing Atlas? Closest approach to the sun, perihelion, came on October 29, 2025, just inside the orbit of Mars. Even before that date, Atlas was already an outlier. Early size estimates put the nucleus in the 4-7 kilometer range, monumental for an interstellar visitor, and it's moving around 36 kilometers per second. If Aumuamua was a ping-pong ball gliding silently through the solar system, Atlas is a multi-story building running a sprint. Big objects usually move slow. Atlas didn't get that memo. Then came the post-perihelion surprise from Chile. The Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array, ALMA, tracked Atlas and found it wasn't where the gravity-only solution said it should be. The offset was about four arcseconds. That's not a rounding error, that's a fingerprint. ALMA's teams went down the checklist. Atmospheric phase fluctuations, calibrator stability, baseline solutions, ephemeris errors, even solar elongation effects. They re-reduced the visibilities through independent pipelines. The shift survived every audit. In orbital dynamics, that kind of residual forces you to fit non-gravitational acceleration terms. Those are one, a two, a three parameters you only turn on when something is pushing back. If the push is natural, the bookkeeping is brutal. Momentum conservation says you pay for acceleration with mass. For Atlas to drift that far, that fast, by venting gas like a normal comet, it would need to lose on the order of a sixteenth of its total mass in a month. If Atlas really weighs tens of billions of tons, that implies at least five billion tons should be hanging around it as a vast, faint debris envelope. And yet as of now, there's no obvious cloud. Either we're about to see it in December, when geometry is perfect, or something else is doing the pushing. Meanwhile, SolarView satellites watched Atlas brighten like a flare. Stereo, Soho LASCO, and GOES-19 CCOR-1 coronagraph tracked its light curve climbing with a slope close to R7, 5, steeper than almost anything in the comet catalog. Multiband photometry and high-resolution spectra showed a coma dominated by carbon-bearing gas, CN. C2, a dust distribution skewed toward ultrafine grains, and unusually strong atomic nickel lines with weak or absent iron. Color indices jumped blueward, so blue that, for a moment around perihelion, Atlas's visible spectrum outblued the sun. These near-IR data added a layer of strangeness. Complex organics fragmenting and recombining as if fresh material was being exposed and processed at speed. Stack each oddity on top of the next and you get a nine-point anomaly ledger. Retrograde orbit, yet it rides almost flat along the ecliptic rare. A persistent sunward jet, rarer still size and speed at opposite ends of the distribution. Perfect timing alignments near multiple planets while Earth is blinded by solar glare. A nickel-heavy composition that starts to look engineered. Extreme dryness for a comet. Polarization curves more negative than anything we've logged in decades. An inbound direction within single-digit degrees of the famous 1977, wow, radio burst. And finally, that blue surge, post-perihelion brightening where cooling red should live. Explain any one of these and you can shrug. Explain all nine and you start to wonder if comet is the right word. Comparisons help. Aumuamua, small, silent, no coma, puzzling non-grav drift, then gone. Two, Ish Borisov, classic volatile-rich comet, loud with water and co, textbook behavior. Atlas refuses both templates. It is active but dry, massive but fast, chemically weird but geometrically cooperative. It's as if nature took traits from two different families and welded them into something that isn't quite either. Skepticism is doing what it's supposed to do. ALMA's offset is being revetted by outside groups. Photometry teams are stress-testing aperture choices and star catalogs. 
Spectroscopists are rechecking flats, lamps, and sky subtraction to make sure nickel isn't a calibration ghost. SETI backends are listening at hydrogen line and water maser bands. So far, no structured radio, no repeating narrowband, no obvious beacons. That's how this works. Extraordinary claims get a long runway of ordinary checks. Still, the physics has teeth. If you can't find the mass loss that should be paying for the acceleration, you're forced to consider a driver that doesn't need to shed material. Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb has said it plainly. If December arrives with no debris cloud and the non-gravitational terms hold up, the cleanest remaining explanation is propulsion. Technology, full stop. He doesn't mean aliens as a slogan. He means a falsifiable fork in the road. Cloud appears, natural outgassing wins. Or it doesn't, natural outgassing loses. So December 19, 2025, becomes the moment of truth. Atlas will be roughly 1.8 AU from Earth, far, but well within the reach of precision astrometry and deep imaging. The global campaign is already scheduled. ALMA for millimeter wave dust and gas with subarctic and astrometry. Hubble WFC-3 UVIS for deep, wide field dust searches and polarization. JWST NER-SPEC and MIRI for high SN spectra from 0.7 to 12 microns looking for thermal excesses and engineered spectral slopes. Gemini South and VLT for fast cadence photometry and high dispersion optical lines. Even small scopes will matter if they coordinate. Synchronized polarization angles, fixed physical apertures, standardized calibration stars. The goal is binary. Does the expected 5 plus billion tons of material show up or not? There's more on the checklist than just dust. If Atlas is still accelerating, milliarcsec and astrometry can see a gravitational deflection shortfall around 0.27 arcseconds. The tiny lensing-like displacement lobe calculated as a sanity check on the orbit solutions. If Atlas is venting like a normal comet, polarization angles should swing with phase and grain size in predictable ways. If they stay rigid or exhibit grid-like symmetry, that's a very different story. Thermal maps should show a hot day side and cool night side. If the heat pattern looks flattened, uniform, or phase-lagged in a way that suggests active management, that's also a tell. And if the spectrum displays sharp, regularly spaced lines with non-molecular spacing, that's not chemistry, that's hardware. The honest outcome tree is simple. Scenario 1. A broad, extremely faint debris envelope appears. Polarization relaxes toward known curves. Non-grav terms shrink as outgassing drops. Thermal maps look messy and asymmetric. Verdict, Atlas is natural, exotic, rare, but natural. Scenario two, no debris cloud to the sensitivity limits. Non-grav persists. Polarization is too clean. Thermal looks engineered. Verdict, the propulsion hypothesis climbs the ladder from speculative to likely. Either answer rewrites a textbook. One rewrites several. Until then, new data keeps complicating the picture. As Atlas rounded the sun, multiple teams noted quasi-periodic flashes, tiny nine-hour spikes in reflected intensity with a stability more like a metronome than a tumbling rock. Ordinary comets wobble and sputter. Their light curves look like an EKG in a storm. Atlas looks timed. That doesn't prove intent, but it does imply symmetry. Panels, facets, repeating geometry, anything that reflects with regular cadence. Add that to the sunward jet recorded in July and August, a narrow, collimated stream aimed into the solar glare, and you start to see not chaos, but control. If that jet is rich in nickel carbonyl, as at least one analysis argues, the chemistry gets even stranger. Nickel carbonyl is fragile in air but useful in industry. Heat it, and it breaks into pure nickel and carbon dioxide, which can plate surfaces and carry heat away. Translate that to space and you get a passive thermal regulator. Sunlight drives decomposition. Nickel redeposits as a mirror. The mirror reflects more sunlight, temperature stabilizes. That cycle would explain Atlas's counterintuitive brightening after perihelion and the lack of a classic dusty tail. Heavy, cohesive exhaust won't bloom into a feathery veil. It will cling, condense, and polish. Planetary defense folks are watching for different reasons. If Atlas can change its own reflectivity and cross-section, it can also change its path by riding photon pressure, a solar sail effect. The numbers are small over days but non-trivial over months. Radiation pressure is free delta V if you can modulate it. 
That's not how comets behave. That is how craft behave. But let's ground this in the discipline that keeps science honest. Predictions before measurements. If Atlas's October drift was paid by mass loss, December should reveal a diffuse envelope with a surface brightness gradient that falls roughly like row one and polarization that swings to less negative values as grain sizes grow. If the drift was paid by something else, we'll see a clean environment, a flat or tiled polarization map, a thermal field that refuses to be comet chaotic, and a continued astrometric creep that refuses to die out. Those are measurable, falsifiable, and public. There's also a human layer to all of this. Alien is a word that breaks conversations. It polarizes faster than any light curve. That's why most researchers avoid it and stick to data. But even the cautious are admitting the Atlas ledger is unprecedented. The responsible position isn't to declare certainty, it's to declare the test. Dust cloud or not. Deflection or not. Engineered spectral slopes or not. A month from now, the ambiguity narrows. If Atlas turns out to be natural, the victory is huge. We'll have discovered a new class of interstellar object. Dry, nickel-rich, sunward jetting, blue brightening, and comet theory will grow a new branch. If Atlas turns out to be more than natural, the victory is bigger and stranger. We will have watched a non-terrestrial technology operate in real time under the full gaze of our best instruments. No whispers, no blurry photos, just clean public physics. Between now and then, the work is very specific. Observers will standardize apertures in kilometers, not arc seconds. So the coma comparisons are apples to apples. Polarimetry teams will lock in the same phase angles to build a consistent atlas of angles and albedos. Spectroscopists will chase nickel and iron lines across nights to test whether the missing iron persists or was an artifact. Astrometry groups will merge optical centroids with ALMA phase reference positions to push down the error bars. Even amateurs will matter. Synchronized DSLR photometry and stacking under dark skis can extend the surface brightness limits of the dust search farther than any single scope can alone. And when the window opens, everything happens fast. USD will sweep. Hubble will sweep. ALMA will track, ground-based giants will hammer the light curve, and within days we'll know which of the two worlds we live in. The one where Atlas is a comet that breaks rules but pays its bills, or the one where Atlas is something that sets its own rules and owes us an introduction. Until then, all we can do is keep the ledger honest. Atlas moved where gravity didn't send it. Atlas brightened blue where physics said it shouldn't. Atlas carries nickel where iron should walk beside it. Atlas points a jet toward the sun and reflects light with a rhythm that looks too neat for chaos. None of that proves intent. All of that demands an answer. December is the answer. If the debris cloud appears, we learn something profound about comets. If it doesn't, we learn something more profound about ourselves. That we finally noticed a visitor that wasn't just passing through, it was performing.